He's an artist. He does it with imagination. A futuristic science fiction fantasy that looks at class, immortality, life and death, but is probably best remembered for Sean Connery's wedding tackle threatening to pop out at any point. Zardoz. You must be destroyed. Why? Because you could destroy us. As you've destroyed the rest of life? Do you like weird? Good, because this is a very weird film. Weirder than Weird Al Atreides. You're hurting me. Consuela, this is an experiment. We must find out how it came here. Zardoz is known for, I don't know, one of three things. Sean Connery in an incontinent diaper, the giant stone head, and the feeling after having watched this film that you've been on quite the trip without the benefit of acid. In this tale, I am a fake god by occupation and a magician by inclination. Zardoz is a film that on the surface is a weird, often messy film that feels like hippies dropping out, but actually does try to tell a story. The first half of the film is a really elaborate setup. Rather than just have a massive info dump at the start of the film, Zardoz unfolds a bit at a time, often through flashbacks or a character's recollections. By the time everything's explained, the film does start to get lost in a whirlwind of weird for weird's sake, but you probably knew that going in. It's a bit like attending Burning Man, but with less regret. The year is 2293. The primitive brutals are kept in check by the exterminators who worship a Zardoz. The gun is good. The gun is good! The penis is evil. Well, that explains a lot. Zardoz gives them guns and dodgy health advice. The penis shoots seeds and makes new life to poison the earth with a plague of men. One of their number, Zed, stows away aboard the giant stone head and kills the pilot, Arthur Frame. The head brings Zed to the Vortex, which is basically a gated community keeping out the riffraff, while the rich folk have become Eternals, aging only as a punishment for transgressions. Like if you cut off the Botox supply to a reality TV star. This no proles commune has evolved past things like sex and violence, and so the appearance of a regressive like Zed is an eye-opener. I mean, there's no manscaping going on there at all. May wants to study Zed. Friend wants to bust Zed's balls, while Consuela wants him destroyed, which is a trippy meat cute if ever there was one. You can see the disrupting effect. Let's keep it! It appears Arthur Frayne had taken on the thankless task of organizing food for the Vortex Dwellers, and his solution was to organize the Brutals to do it for the Eternals. He used the stone head to terrorize the Brutals into worshipping the head as Zardoz, and the Brutals would be used as slaves to farm food. He also set up the Exterminators to act as his enforcers. On a side note, I am so glad I tried this new FX plugin, Nipper Zipper, which will automatically obscure nipples and other anatomical dangly bits to make a video YouTube safe. You can select different settings, blur, black boxes, mosaic, and David Frost. There's even a setting for auto-detecting wayward nutsacks. Very useful for this video. The Eternal Society is set up so that the Brutals grow the food under the eye of the exterminators. The Eternals do their own cooking, for themselves at least, and for two growing groups of outcasts under their care. That's why Zardos made you grow crops. To feed these people. The apathetics, ah, they're not too fussed about anything. Possibly an offshoot of the car industry at the time. Those Eternals who act up are punished by aging them. A few months here, a few months there. But at some point they'll eventually be cast out as renegades. Which at one point is the fate of Friend. The Eternals have a computer overseeing their lives. Tabernacle. It's like, OK Google, turn off the lights. Shit, who turned out the lights? I think you're a crystal. In fact, this one. You have me in the palm of your hand. Slowly, it all unfolds. Zed has a realization in a library that something about their society is off, and he has taught himself to read books left over from civilization, where he learned everything he could. There was one book that pushed him over the edge, and that's when he decided to stow away on the head to try and find out what's what, who's who, why's why, and where's where. The Wizard of Oz, Zardoz. Eternity is not what it's cracked up to be, and Zed sees the cracks in the Eternal Society. Basically, the inability to die after having lived for so long turns out to be a colossal bummer. Some of the Eternals are intrigued by the prospect of ending it all after living for hundreds of years, where the only entertainment is a library of a half a dozen Steven Seagal movies on videotape. May and her followers teach Zed all of their knowledge by osmosis, which apparently works best in the nude, 
And then we get a revolution in the vortex, which is partially depicted through the medium of interpretive dance. Arthur Frayne, reconstituted by the tabernacle, explains it all in the dying minutes of the film as the film trades coherence for stunning visuals. You see, our death wish was devious and deep. It was careful genetic breeding that produced this mutant, the slave who could free his masters. The brutals show up to kill the Eternals, who by this stage heh, have decided they've had enough of this shit. But nobody could quite determine how this becomes this. Zardoz is a kinky film. It was filmed in Ireland in the early 1970s, where the filmmakers found it hard work to get enough local actors happy to appear in the nude. One scene has the Eternals talking about erections, since they themselves have been thinking about cricket for hundreds of years. Softcore doesn't do it for Zed, but Consuela apparently does. I destroy what I set out to defend. He who fights too long against dragons becomes a dragon himself. Hot off the success of his 1972 film Deliverance, British director John Borman had attempted to put together a Lord of the Rings adaptation for United Artists. When the studio looked at the budget and go, holy shit, they threw the idea into a volcano and Borman had the idea for a project that would become Zados. Borman's ideas and script scared most of the people who read it, but he did manage to convince 20th Century Fox to put up the cash to get the film made. History does not record if Borman's original choice to play Zed, Burt Reynolds, had insisted on calling his character Z. <laughs> Director John Borman uses the budget he had quite well for the most part. The trippy visuals are achieved through mirrors, back projection, front projection, lots of smoke and haze, very good editing, all people just acting weird. Visually, it's quite impressive, and the intense imagery rarely lets up. The cinematography is uniformly excellent. The production design can veer between cool and much less cool, with some set dressing making part of the film look like they're in the kindergarten classroom at Christmas. Borman was an excellent director of action, and the scenes with Zed and his exterminator buddies come off much better than those with the Eternals acting all weird. The Eternals are meant to be super evolved, but they just come off as bratty hippies in a commune having arguments about who has to clean the toilets that week. The Eternals here were rich folk who'd cut themselves off from the people who do the hard work for them, which was something folks in the 70s were becoming more and more aware of, at least in some parts of the world. Zardoz does have a message, which is probably heavily obscured by the smoke and the boobs and Connery's bollocks popping out. Also, why is there a car hovering in the smoke? I mean, these folks are shitting themselves about a giant stone head, but there's also a ghostly vehicle. Sean Connery took on the role as a way to get away from his public James Bond persona. Here, he's a brutal killer who, uh, try again, Sean. Charlotte Rampling seemed to appear in anything that was remotely arty. Consuela is totally set on destroying Zed, whereas everyone else in the Vortex likes the novelty of the hirsute brute hanging about. It's fundamental to our society that we do everything for ourselves on a basis of absolute equality. Yes or no? Potatoes. Consuela isn't having any of that, until, of course, later on when she eventually falls for him. John Alderton had starred in Upstairs, Downstairs and sitcoms like Please Sir, which made him an unusual choice for such an out there film. Friend is both belligerent and chummy with Zed. Sarah Kesselman would have a long career on the British stage and in television productions. May's curiosity is that of a detached scientist, but she also realizes first Zed is perhaps a bigger threat than previously realized. Zardoz has a bit of the DNA of a television show like The Prisoner in places, though I honestly don't remember having to use the blurs and pixelation as often when we covered that show. I looked behind the mask and I saw the truth. Zardoz. Zardoz is an interesting film, well made for the most part. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a great film. It has some very good bits in places. The first 10 minutes in particular are great. The acting is on an even keel, where everyone at least feels like they're on the same page. It's just perhaps everybody's holding the script upside down. Zardoz is not in any way an influential film, unless of course you were a director of music videos in the early 1980s. It might seem impenetrable, I certainly found this a slog to get through when I was younger, but I do appreciate its good bits as an adult. Hey, I didn't like broccoli as a kid and now I love it. In fact, I'm junior vice president of the Broccoli Federation Western Hemisphere Conference. As for Zardoz, I can appreciate the weirdness, even if I don't like every part of the film. John Borman would make movies in many different genres, but he would return to fantasy with a more traditional story that was still visually impressive. A film that many feel is the definitive take on the story of King Arthur. 
Excalibur. At the very least, no one has yet managed to do it better. Hang on a second, what did they say? He said the penis is evil. What, my penis? The release of Zardoz in 1974 did not come close to troubling any box office records, which is a very nice way of saying the film came and went in theatres without being troubled by much of an audience. The film eventually, belatedly, did become a bit of a cult classic. I mean, there aren't too many films like Zardoz, which is a bit like saying there aren't many cars like the Ford Edsel. May has been given seven days to complete her study. Then Zed will be terminated. Azaro seems destined to remain a curio, an in-joke for those in the know, but not a genre classic. It's just something that, if you're interested in weird films or science fiction fantasy films of the decade, you should try to watch it all the way through at least once. If not for the experience of watching the film, you can at least say with a sense of self-satisfaction, I watched Zardoz all the way through once. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos.